Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 7th of January. Four convicts in 2012 Delhi gang rape case to be hanged on 22nd January. Pakistan's parliament approves extending term of army chief. And Dhaka International Trade Fair attracts visitors to Bangladesh. And now for all the details. Four convicts in the 2012 Nirbhaya gang rape and murder case will be hanged on 22nd January, a court in Indian capital New Delhi said on Tuesday. Nirbhaya, 23-year-old physiotherapy intern, was raped in a moving bus by six people in 2012. The brutality of the crime jolted the nation's collective consciousness, triggering angry street protest. A court in Indian capital New Delhi on Tuesday issued death warrant for the four convicts in the 2012 Nirbhaya gang rape and murder case. The convicts will be hanged on January 22nd at 7 a.m. The verdict came during the hearing of a plea seeking the issuance of black warrant against the four convicts, Mukesh, Pavan, Vinay and Akshay in the case. The plea was filed by the parents of Nirbhaya, the 23-year-old paramedical student who was brutally gang-raped by six individuals in 2012. <laughs> Nirbhaya is the changed name of the 23-year-old physiotherapist intern who was raped and brutalized in a moving bus in South Delhi by six people. She succumbed to injuries on December 29, 2012 in a Singapore hospital. The brutality of the crime jolted the nation's collective consciousness, triggering angry street protests. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi spoke with US President Donald Trump to convey New Year greetings. He expressed his desire to continue to work with him to enhance cooperation in areas of mutual interest, Prime Minister's office said in a statement on Tuesday. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi spoke with U.S. President Donald Trump and expressed his desire to continue to work with him to enhance cooperation in areas of mutual interest, Prime Minister's office said in a statement on Tuesday. During the conversation, Prime Minister Modi conveyed his New Year greetings to Trump. He noted that India-U.S. relations, which are built on trust, mutual respect and understanding, have grown from strength to strength, the statement said. Modi highlighted the significant progress made in deepening the strategic partnership between the two countries in the previous year and expressed his desire to continue to work with President Trump for enhancing cooperation in all areas of mutual interest, it said. President Trump wished the people of India prosperity and progress in the new year and expressed satisfaction at the achievements in the relationship in the last few years. India-U.S. bilateral relations have developed into a global strategic partnership based on shared democratic values and increasing convergence of interest on bilateral, regional and global issues. Security forces on Tuesday gunned down a terrorist in an encounter in Pulwama district of India's Daman Kashmir. The slain terrorist was identified as a member of Pakistan-based Hizbul Mujahideen. One terrorist was killed in an encounter with security forces in Avantipura in Pulwama district of India's Jammu and Kashmir on Tuesday. The encounter broke out as cordon and search operations were underway in Avantipura based on inputs about the presence of terrorists in the area. Police said identity and affiliation of the slain terrorists were being ascertained as search operations continued till the last reports came in. Arms and ammunition were also recovered from the site. 
Earlier, two Indian Army soldiers were killed during an encounter with terrorists in Rajouri district of Jammu and Kashmir on the intervening night of December 31st and January 1. India blames neighboring Pakistan helps terrorists infiltrate across the border to spread unrest in Kashmir Valley. Pakistan, however, denies the allegations. Moving on, India summoned the senior-most Pakistani diplomat in New Delhi on Monday to lodge a strong protest over incidents targeting Pakistan's Sikh minority and to demand immediate action. The envoy was told about concerns raised by members of civil society, parliamentarians and others at the continued persecution of religious and ethnic minorities in Pakistan. India's Foreign Ministry on Monday summoned Pakistan's Deputy High Commissioner to India, Sayyid Haider Shah, and lost a strong protest over desecration of Gurdwara Nankana Sahib, the birthplace of Sikhism's founder Guru Nanak, and the recent targeted killing of a member of minority Sikh community in Pakistan. The ministry in a statement said, the diplomat was conveyed that Pakistan should take action against the perpetrators in both the incidents and ensures safety, security and welfare of members of minority communities. This came hours after India's Shiromni Akhali Dal Party President Sukhbir Singh Badal and other Sikh leaders submitted a letter to Foreign Minister S. Jay Shankar demanding that India should seek action against those targeting Pakistani Sikhs. And we, a Sikh community around the world, need a written assurance from the Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan that uh, the minorities in Pakistan, will be their interests will be protected, their lives will be protected, their property will be protected, and their religious rights will be protected. And if he doesn't do it, I requested the government of India, we should take it up at all international forums, even UN, to convey that how Pakistan is treating the minority. India has already condemned the Friday's incident when a mob had threatened to demolish the Gurdwara Nankana Sahib in Pakistan, and the incident of murder of 25-year-old Sikh man named Parvinder Singh in Peshawar. Pakistan's foreign office in a statement rejected what it described as Indian propaganda about the treatment of the country's minorities. Pakistani authorities have arrested the main culprit who incited the mob at Nankana Sahib and has set up a committee to investigate the murder of the Sikh man. Pakistani authorities on Monday handed over 20 Indian fishermen to India at the Atari Waga border as a goodwill gesture. The fishermen were arrested by the Maritime Security Agency for allegedly venturing into Pakistani territorial waters for fishing last year. Around 20 Indian fishermen returned to their homes as they were released by Pakistan as a goodwill gesture on Monday. The prisoners were welcomed with sweets as they crossed over to India through Atari Waga border before heading towards their respective destinations. The fishermen were reportedly arrested by the Maritime Security Agency for allegedly venturing into Pakistani territorial waters for fishing last year. Due to the rocky relations between India and Pakistan, prisoners who have completed their jail terms often languish in each other's jails for months, if not years afterwards. Pakistan had released 360 Indian fishermen last year. Pakistan's National Assembly, the Lower House of Parliament on Tuesday, passed three crucial bills to give extension to Army Chief General Kamar Javed Bajwa for another three years. The bills will be now presented in the Senate, the Upper House, and are expected to be passed without any problem. Pakistan's National Assembly on Tuesday approved three bills regarding the tenure of the three services chiefs. Defence Minister Parvez Khattak has last week tabled the three bills in the National Assembly while seeking powers to extend tenure of the Army Chief General Kamar Javid Bajwa. The bills mention 64 years as upper age limit of all three defence chiefs in the case of reappointment and extension, otherwise the officer will retire at the age of 60 years. Pakistan's Supreme Court had last month given the government, led by Prime Minister Imran Khan, six months to set the tenure and other service terms of the army chief through an act of parliament. The court had suspended an earlier government decision to extend General Bajwa's term for three years, citing procedural loopholes. 
It, however, granted a temporary six-month extension to Bajwa's term, which was due to end on November 28th last year. In news from Afghanistan, five militants, including a Taliban mind maker, were killed as helicopter gunships stormed a hideout of the insurgents in Afghanistan's Kunduz province on Sunday. The Taliban, active in parts of the rest of Kunduz province, has not commented on the killings yet. Five militants, including a Taliban mine maker, were killed in an air raid in Akhtash district of Afghanistan's northern Kunduz province. Provincial Governor Spokesman Ismatullah Muradi confirmed on Monday. According to media reports, Muradi said, acting on a tip-off, helicopter gunships on Sunday targeted a hideout of the Taliban fighters in Akhtash, killing the five insurgents on the spot and wounding other three. The Taliban, which is active in parts of the restive Kunduz province, has not commented on the killing yet. The Taliban had launched large-scale attacks on one of Afghanistan's main cities, Kunduz, and taken hospital patients as hostages, even as the group continued negotiations with the United States on ending America's longest war last year. The militant group, which has always demanded all foreign forces to leave Afghanistan, now controls or holds sway over roughly half of the country and is at its strongest since its 2001 defeat by a US-led invasion. A year-long project to clean up a five-kilometer stretch of beach in Sri Lanka's capital city of Colombo, which is popular among local families and foreign tourists, was launched over the weekend. A year-long project to clean up a five-kilometer stretch of beach in Sri Lanka's capital city of Colombo was launched over the weekend. The project is to provide daily cleanup of a 5 km stretch of beach in Colombo, namely Velavate, Dehiwala and Mount Lavinia, which is popular among local families and foreign tourists. The project is funded by Port City Colombo and supervision of daily maintenance of the beaches will be overseen by a local foundation. State Minister of Environment Jayantha Samaravira during the inauguration ceremony emphasized that keeping Sri Lanka clean and safe was a policy priority of the government and he explained his gratitude to Port City Colombo for helping meet this goal by funding the project. Invested by China Harbour Engineering Company, Port City Colombo is a project to build a modern sustainable smart city out of 269 hectares of land reclaimed from the sea and added to the district of Colombo. The month-long Dhaka International Trade Fair, which kicked off last week, has been attracting visitors from across the world to Bangladeshi capital, Dhaka. The biggest annual event of Bangladesh showcases a wide range of local and foreign products, including machinery, equipment and materials for agriculture. The biggest annual event of Bangladesh, the Dhaka International Trade Fair, has begun in the country's capital, Dhaka city. A total of 483 stalls, including 112 pavilions and 128 mini pavilions, have been set up this year in the fair, which is being thronged by thousands of people every day. Hundreds of organizations of Bangladesh and 21 foreign countries, including Australia, China, the United States and India, are taking part in the fair. The exhibition every year showcases a wide range of local and foreign products, including machinery, equipment and materials for agriculture. The event is held from the first week of January till the first week of February every year. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. Four convicts in 2012 Delhi Gangre Kibes to be hanged on 22nd January. Pakistan's parliament approves extending term of army chief. And Dhaka International Trade Fair attracts visitors to Bangladesh. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.